All right, bro. Let me clean my shades. Are we live? Are we live? Yep. We're live. Boom. Welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Time. Today we're in Del Rey. <laughs> we just drove all the way from Miami <coughs> to come hang out with a true artist. A true artist, not just by the way he's painting, but by the way he's living life. Thank you. Cody, <laughs> AKA Cody, <laughs> AKA Code. Thank you. Code. What up, bro? I love you. Now I'm taking my shades off. I just cleaned my shades, <laughs> but now we're in the shade. Are you wearing your shades? No, keep I, keep I, your shades. If I, you're feeling good in your off. shades. I can take them off. Well, you can take them off or you can take Let's them take off. off. Okay. Let's take them off. Let's take them off. Well, anyways, today we got Code. Met him a couple years ago at Art Basel. Art Basel. Yeah? Yeah, Art Basel. We met him at Art Basel, but then we've been on a couple little adventures since then. But today we sit in our background is a little bit of art. Bro, <laughs> so tell us what your art is, what you do, where you're from. Give the world a little bit about oh, who you are. Okay. And what you do. So I, I kind of came into this. I, I, I came into my art career when I, when I moved down here. Um, I was always artistic when I was little, right? Okay. So I was born and raised in Erie, Pennsylvania, up on, on Lake Erie. Okay. And I moved to I thought Lake Pittsburgh. Erie looked like an ocean when I passed it. Erie's gorgeous, believe it or not. Okay. Top, top 10 in, in the, in the world Nessie? for sunsets. What's your name? Ness? I don't Nessie, know. That's, Bessie? That's not in Lake Erie. Isn't it the, the Loch Ness Monster? That's in uh, Loch, <laughs> Loch Ness. <laughs> hey, eerie, Loch Ness Monster, right. it sounds eerie. Okay, keep going. Right. So I was artistic, you know, in, in school growing up, but I never, I never really held value okay. behind what I was creating, right? Because it's just- What were you just, always drawing? Eh, just like anything in art class. Like I remember, in one particular assignment, like I, um, we had to do our, our initials, like either our first initial or our last initial. So okay. I did a P and it was really kind of cool. I did like a, a desert kind of like backdrop. So it looked like a desert in the background and I had a lizard going up the side of the P. Okay. So I made, the, I made this lizard and, and the background and the foreground and every, everything like looked great. And I took it to my teacher and he said, that lizard he said you traced that lizard and i said no i didn't you know I how said, old are you at this time i i might have been jesus 10 okay 10 years old and he said oh i want to see the original of the of the lizard so i showed him the original in the book like i took this lizard from, a, oh, from like the, the book. book you were looking at it right so i was just looking at this lizard you know obviously like a, a, a point of reference, you know, like uh, not just everybody like, needs a point of reference. Of course, of course. So it was just a point of reference. But this thing was ended up being, you know, it was probably about twice the size of what I created, you know. And then he immediately apologized to me and he said, you know, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but that's just like one story, you know. So, but I, I didn't, I didn't. That's hold, when you knew you were an artist. No, so, but I, I didn't, I didn't hold value behind it. Like it just made me feel good, you know. It was, it was one thing in my life that made me feel good, and it and it brought me out of kind of me, you know? And for mm -hmm. the longest time, like I, I played hockey my entire life, dude. I could ice skate when I was, you know, yay big, you know? Right. And that's what held value for me for the longest time. Being an athlete, they say, Being who are you, athlete. bro? Being I'm an, an athlete. athlete. Right, but like, that's the whole point is like when you're an athlete, right? That, that's how well you can do this growing up kind of held the value for me, right? right? So like, hey, he's he's playing, you know, top tier. So, you know, it's good, you know. You're you're looking at your life as a different as a specific level of where you are in that world. Of... Right. Exactly. So, you it, like anything, you know, you just consistency and you work hard at it and you know, hockey went really well for me and it taught me a lot of life lessons and I met great people. I've been all around the country traveling and I've spent a lot of time with my parents that helped me develop a, a relationship with my dad at such a, a, a young age, right. you know, so I'm very close with, with my family and my father and, you know, everything, you know, and um, so yeah, I, d I developed this hockey career and I ended up, you know, 
taking me to college and, and playing in college. But, you know. How was is, how is the difference from going from a high school feel, right, to a college vibe of, of an athletic, I guess it, I just say it was such a business. It's, it's more intense, you know, like when you're in college and you're playing a sport, it's like that's why I felt like that's why I was there. Right. I was very immature mentally in college and I think a lot of people are like I don't think I was really ready for yeah. college um and I you're just there because it's right there you have to get there at that specific time you don't have two or three years to wait right boom you're on this road I'm going to the pros I'm going to hockey right I'm playing this immediately year round faster the better right man just give me a two or three more years to mature right Golly. but I didn't know that you know like everything in my life like I was was done on my terms right, right? so you know, absolutely no patience with anything. Like, I need to do this, I need to accomplish this, I need, you know, like, go, 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 go. You know, there was no sort of like, mm. So, in the midst of all that, like, I was, I was dealing with, I was dealing with um, a lot of, like, personal stuff. I had, you know, a really bad drug problem for, like, f four or five years, like, okay. really, really bad, and, and, while I was in college playing, like I was You're also doing like all. living Going this to school, doing the drugs, but like living this, this like double life, man. And it was so chaotic in, in my brain. And like, it's crazy because I'm an artist now and I, I, I eat, breathe and, and live this, you know? Right. And back then, like it wasn't even, it wasn't even in my mind. Like if you told me back then in the midst of everything, like, Hey, like you're going to go on in life and you're going to create and you know, like you're gonna meet some awesome people. Like I would say, you know, like no, there's no possible, possible way, man. You know, so everything happens for a reason. But when you were when you were going through it, obviously you start drawing, you like the art class, things like that. When you really kicked into sports, did you ever just doodle around? Did you ever? No. So it I was just you always just had the talent. You just never applied myself. Didn't even think about didn't it. Didn't even think about it, bro. I, it wasn't. Didn't even. have a story to tell that way. Right. So, like, my story was through sports. That's through my. How you that's, were, that's my story. That's your practice. So, long story short, right? Is is I got pulled away from that, you know, and I, I no longer had hockey, you know, and I went to treatment, and it was the best thing for me, um, and I paid for it. Yeah. That's pretty, it's pretty cool, right? I love when the train comes through. Oh, man. It's really cool. Go take a tour downtown Miami. <laughs> so um, I got humbled pretty quick after that was gone because. Man, you wake up and it's right. gone. Ne hey, man, who are you? Right. What do you do? All right. And oh, I, I have nothing. Gosh. Right. So like there was <sighs> there was I, I, I felt like I had no value in my life, you know, and through through treatment, it brought me down here, you know, and I can, for the longest time, I was so like sketched out to say that. And, you know, like, kind of like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's personal to me, you know, and right. I, I don't think everybody should be privy to that. And, you know, I'm not bragging about anything or it's real or saying, it yeah, it it's, 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 it's very real. And the demons and everything that comes with it, man, it's, it's, you know, I don't wish that upon anybody, right. you know, and, and mentally, like I, I've been to hell, you know, and I've, <laughs> I've been extremely lonely and down and out, you know, like I, I know those feelings, right. you know, like I've, I've, I've stewed in that for the longest time, you know, and I came down here and I really had nothing, you know, and by having nothing, man, like I just slowly started picking back up on, on things that I enjoyed. And, and that was my art. So and you felt just all by yourself and you're like, man, what is it that I really like to do? Well, not even that, like, not, like, something that's therapeutic to me. Like, I was still, okay. I would, I, I brought my hockey okay. equipment down here, and I was skating. But, like, anything that was therapeutic to me, like, that's what I was looking for. Because okay. I, I was in recovery, you know, like, early recovery. So, it's like, I need to do what's best for me, and I need to do self-interest. And I still think that's, you know, um, important today. And like I said before, like I was so go, 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 go. And what recover, like recovery trying to like kind of taught me was to like slow the fuck down. You know what I mean? Like stop, stop having, breathe. yeah, yeah just breathe, it, it, breathe. Literally like the present is a gift. Enjoy the gift every right. single second that we're given it. And just be able to just do nothing but enjoy Joy. just the present of the moment that is God given 
right now. Right. Right. And and I just say like athletes like we're so ready for the next thing. Right. Uh, it could be in any in any anybody's thing. Everybody's just so ready for the next, next right. thing, and we get it, and we're on to the next, and on to the next. And it's like, man, we should just be enjoying every the the entire journey I mean, right. of it, uh, like of everything, of yeah. the hard grind, of the down, of the like. We're called to be exactly where we are ex- at that exact moment in time, and like, we should enjoy it like right. to the fullest, and, or learn something from it, you know, in some way or another. It's like, if we could really. In all reality, dude, if we could just be in a constant meditation of just almost a prayer with every breath, yeah, dude, people would think you're crazy. But but a, but a it lot would be, uh, a it lot would be a lot comes beautiful. with that. A lot comes with that, and you know, like like you know, I didn't have any self love, and like how did how I, did you find that? What did, was it an acceptance? Was it? I guess it was just so again, like being being down here and 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 you know being early in my recovery and and just being around like like minded people and people that just like wanted to change for the better and the art scene, I right. guess. But I knew like I when I came down here, like I knew my life had like there was something in me that like had changed. Like I had my spiritual awakening when I was down here, and I had, you know, like I really connected with <laughs> with like bigger things, you know, and. Um, yeah, it, it just it 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 has all led me to where I am today, you know. And I'm not saying like I'm a perfect person or like any, anything like that. No, it just, no, but like I just strive to be better than I was yesterday, you know. And um, I think that's important because before I could na- like never take any self inventory, and especially with art, like it's it's the same kind of emotions like you get humbled really quick like there's always going to be somebody better than you and there's always going to be people that you know their their careers are are growing faster than yours or whatever the case may be you know but like one thing that i've i've learned about my life is like that's their story and that's their journey Uh you know and i have my story and my journey and everybody's goals are different right so if my goals are different than yours i'm not going to sit here and value the things that you have as you shouldn't on me, you know? 100%. So it's like, you just kind of like learn to like, just just live in love, you know? Like that's, and that's kind of like who I try to be on, on a daily with basis. With your art, with your art, do you try to implement all of that into how you're performing your art? And I just say like me, it's like everything I'm doing, I try to do it a thousand percent. Like, yeah. And it's got to be this way, and it's got to be that way. And then sometimes people are like, oh, my gosh, that's not perfect. But, like, I'm making it imperfect, like, for that specific reason. And it's, like, perfectly, well, perfectly Imp- imperfect, imperfect, right? Of course. So, so, no- nothing, so like, nothing everything that I've perfect. got to see with you is, like, I mean, dude, you do a lot of different things. You're working with spray paint. You're working with acrylic. You've done huge walls, rainforest scenes. You do people's faces. You do, I mean, if you don't know <laughs> what he's done, pause it. Go look at his artwork because it's thank you crazy. <laughs> um, you work with lines, you make people's yeah, so faces, you do way- all sorts of stuff. So, but I guess you you have um, you have so many different styles, right? That portray so many different things. Yeah. How are you trying to tell your story through the way in the style that I guess you're painting? So I don't as really a therapeutic. Oh man. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh geez. So. First, I think it's it's important to be versatile, right? So like you're only as good as your tools. Right. We were talking last time. He he has he's been practicing. Everybody's got to practice, right? <laughs> he's he's talking about how he's been looking at pictures at an early age. Right. Now I was, I was over in Waco and I just see all this scribble everywhere and I was just like, dude, this mural's going up, bro. It's awesome. Squiggle lines are everywhere. He's like, no, nah, bro, that's just the map. <laughs> I was so confused. So he kind of taught me the map thing, but anyways, so, secret yeah. traits of this right. secrets of the trade. Gritting, but, right? Uh, man, man, tell us, dude. So I, I just try to, I try to be versatile, right? And um, I've, I really have been blessed with like meeting the right people, right? So your vibe attracts your tribe, right? So, man, we, uh, so. This guy. So being down here, I, I just connected with with more like like minded people with me that were also in the art scene. Like I started to develop my art. I started doing stencils. Like I was working for a sports agency, and they wanted to paint. This is how I started my career. They wanted to paint or hire an artist to paint okay. the inside of the gym, and I said no. I I used to do that, but 
but I in my sketchbook I was I was making like Banksy esque like one one layer stencils, just black and white, okay. like one layer with ink pen, you know. So my buddy's like, listen, I'll tell you how to do it on Photoshop. Tells me how to do it on Photoshop. I execute cutting stencils on the fucking like big, you know, big stuff. And I was charging them five hundred dollars a mural. Okay. They're like big, big stuff. And it was a an outlet Man, it for it takes me. forever to cut stencils. Yeah, it's horrible. People who are like, oh my gosh, it's just a stencil and no, I just No, it's horrible. No, you gotta make it and you gotta reverse it, then you gotta cut it's it, then horrible. you gotta it's not fun. It is a lot. And then and then it once you get done with all that, if you can spray it and have a perfect line, oh magic. Right. Keep going, bro. But when it does happen, it's hey. Um So in the gym. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's kind of like how I started. And then again, like through meeting like like-minded people, you know, and like people around here, like like the people that I did this wall with, like uh, Ripe and and Dome, you know, like these are all people that I've met uh, in Miami through Art Basel, being in the scene, you know, and that's and that's huge, right? Like being vulnerable and showing another person who you think is better than you or obviously more talented. Like I've never used a spray paint can, you know, and these kids were doing graffiti pieces, big big pieces. Right. I still can't do graffiti today, you know, but. Um, just to, to, to watch how they worked with a can and the movement and the, and the wrists and everything. Like I, I'm the type of person that when I, when I watch something, like I, I really process everything, you know, and just kind of learning the tricks of the trade. So putting my, putting myself out there, you know, and having these people accept me and, and telling me to come around and Hey, you know, like, you know, come, yeah. come, come paint with us and come do this and just them teaching like, hey, just me come on yeah, over here. Right. we want to learn them everybody's teaching me. so do... like dude it's 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 not just me it's 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 definitely them and i can honestly say dude they're they're some of the best people that i've that i've ever met you know and and i don't really um understand how how artists could be so i guess um kind of reclusive okay in the way that they deal with people like I think if somebody oh, wants to, just like, yeah, hey, if, how are you? Right. Hello. If, somebody, if somebody wants to know something, hey. or, or or if somebody's interested in something, I, I think of course, like like teach They're interested teach, in teach people because at the end of the day, it's like w what will blossom from that will be beautiful, you know. Right. So like, yeah, we're we're able to do You're murals almost like this. helping somebody out with questions that they have, so they can continue to tell their story. Right. So it's it's a beautiful thing, but. I guess like what I, I don't know, my, my art in general, like I, I do a lot of portraits, you know, I try to do like some funky, grungy stuff, some, some modern ask, you know, being in Pittsburgh and growing up in Pittsburgh, you know, like the Warhol Museum was always there. Okay. So I always had like a, I, I always had that like kind of like pop art esque, you know, really kind of like funky style, you know, so like, I'm not saying that I'm trying to be like Andy Warhol in right. any any he way. He is definitely his own. I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not. And I've done it. I've done a portrait of Andy Warhol. But uh, the point being is like just to try to create something new that hasn't been done, or you know. Um, How do you challenge yourself to do that? How do you know what's been done and what hasn't? I, I, guess, I guess you know what I guess, has been done. I guess done. everything. I guess everything has been done, but no, it hasn't. Mm, mm, no. But, but, um, yeah, thinking out, thinking outside of the box, always. I mean, being around people, generating ideas, you know, and um, I guess not creating for somebody else. Like I don't create for somebody else, if that makes sense, right? So like, I'm not creating a piece like. Oh God! I hope this sells. Oh, okay. Like I'm creating this Could piece you like it? because, like, it's what I'm feeling okay. internally, right? And I'm trying to do my best to interpret, what like, what I'm envisioning. What are a couple of your favorite pieces that you've created? Um, I, I, I have a couple. I have a couple. Um, I guess the Snoop Dogg is up there. Okay. So the Snoop Dogg, I made. The, <laughs> I made a portrait. Tell the world. I made a portrait. The first ever. First ever. I don't know if it's Nobody ever been done. Else you in you the tell world. me, you at me, you let me know. So I made a portrait of Snoop Dogg out of my lines, but each line was 
weed and tobacco ground up. So the object was to use sight and smell. So you could smell the painting before you could see it. Mm, so you walk in, you visually see it, you visually smell it. Or it could be behind a wall, but oh. the smell of weed, you will definitely smell it. Okay. If, if you walked into your house, if you bought this painting and you walked into your house you would just smell and it was the on the other thing. side of the wall, you'd be like, dude, your house look, reeks just... like weed. And you would, you would grab their hand and you'd say, come look at this. And they, you'd say, each one of those lines is made out of weed oh with, with a little bit of tobacco. I actually just got me a candle this morning. Heart Hatter Fragrance. Yeah? I don't know the name of it yet, but stay tuned. Okay, I want one. Mm. <laughs> um... And okay, so you've done that one. What's another one? What's another one of your favorites? I don't. I don't know. I can't. I can't. What about huge murals? He did. Look, he did this one. I didn't even. I didn't even know it was his. It's a uh, eleven. Eleven. Th yeah, name, that's right? that's probably eleven. But they would. This was years ago. Years ago. Three, four years ago. Yeah, I was walking past it. I was like, I don't even know who that girl is. But this is the coolest mural I ever seen, and then I seen him take a picture in front of it. Then I put one in one together. Boom! <laughs> made two. It was crazy. So <laughs> that was the first opportunity. It's great. That was the first opportunity that I had to paint a mural of that size in uh, in Wynwood, and the mecca um, of graffiti. So I had the opportunity and I was painting right across in the same parking lot. I was painting across the street from my buddy Grabster and Grabster, AKA Grab, um, he's, he's a very well established artist and he's, he's from Brazil. He always okay. goes back and forth. He knows a lot of people. His style is so fucking unbelievable. Graffiti, murals anything like i've i've learned a lot from him you know and and him and i have done a couple things together you know shout out grab um but yeah i was across the street from him and i got really tripped up on that mural because it was the first time i've ever done anything of that size i've never blended something like that like so i was really fucked up in my head on the colors and the palette and, and whatever so i was in my head for like two three days and i was like oh this looks like shit i'm gonna fucking fuck this up and i was so like pissed and all of us like all the homies we were staying at this house so there was maybe like 10 people in the house and these are like big you know graffiti people from around the fucking world bro bacon uh hyro uh Dome, Grab, Itzy. I mean, like, dude, like a ton, a ton of a star, like everything. Like, there's a ton of people. So, everybody's um, there. Yeah, every everybody was there. So, um, I was sitting on the couch, and Grabs is there, and he's like fucking doing, you know, hello stickers, and I've like showed him this this piece, and he's like, dude, like, what do you, what are you having problems with? And I was like, like, tripped up, and he's like, look at me. That's a pink. That's a red. That's a purple. That's a blue. He's like, those are your colors right there. Like, and I was like, and then it just like clicked. And then like, I just went to town. Yeah, it's an awesome, awesome thing. I don't if know. If we can get a picture of it, we need to like flash it up there or something. Right. It's awesome. It's super awesome. Yeah. And then to end it off, dude. Yeah. Because we could talk, this, we could this talk, is only Yeah, we could talk eight, all day. We could I'm, talk I'm, all day about all sorts of I'm crazy sorry stuff. for. No. <laughs> this piece that we're ending off right here. Yeah. What is it? And so, what did you learn from making this piece? So, br this is... Um, I literally, I don't know if you guys can really see it, but when you walk up, the water, like, it looks like you can hold it. Like, I'm holding it. <laughs> Shout out, Mikey. <laughs> Man, this thing is awesome. Tell us, what is it, bro? So, this was like a, a jungle theme-inspired building. Um, and again... Um, Brian, who, who owns the, the property and the buildings, uh, he gets us a lot of work in Delray, and I'm very grateful you know, to, to have the opportunity to paint and bless the public with my art. But yeah, this was just kind of like, um, you know, he mentioned something to me about uh, you know, doing a jungle theme, and we just kind of you know, ran with it, you know, and I took pictures. This, this whole building, this building used to be solid white. This was just a white cube in the middle of nowhere. You know, um, but it's cool because the, the train gets to pass it every single day. But yeah, we just kind of 
you know, put ah. put our thing on Procreate and and me, Dome, and Ripe, we Man, all kind of like collabed awesome. and had a lift and, you know, came out here and we just kind of like worked as a team for, you know, a solid week. Working as a team. Being yeah. an artist, you work solo, but you've also learned to work as a team. These are my people, man. Man, if you could tell the world one thing, we're closing off quick. But if you could tell the world one thing, bro, what have you really learned? And what have you overcome that like the world may need to just know like? Oh God. Like, dude. How do you do this to me? Why people, do you do this to some me? Some people are just like, man, just do what you do. That's a lie. Don't do what you do. Some people are like, just chase your heart. No, don't chase your heart because that, that guides you in that different things too, right? What I would say to people is, uh, Look at your achievements, right? So it's always good to look at how far you've come in your progress. Because I think a and lot of people- An achievement can be anything. And especially like recently in my life, like I've been beating myself up a lot about a lot of things, you know, but at the end of the day, like I, I need to pull back and, and realize how far that I've come as a person, as an artist, and, and what I've accomplished and what I'm going to accomplish and what, you know, my, my journey still holds for me. So be optimistic, but also love yourself and, and be proud of yourself for how far that you've come is what I would say to people, Man, you know, don't be, go. you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Look, my, my dad always says, hey, this is for all the sports people out there, right? Yo, dude, you can strike out three or four times in a row, right? But when you crank one over the fence, bro, right. It feels you fucking forget good. about it. You, you completely forget about it, right? And everybody right. else does. So facts are, dude, is like every single day, I mean, we mess up way more than we don't, right? Of course. And so, bro, look at it like, okay, I'm going to strike out, strike out, hit a home run, you forget about it, you keep going. But every single breath that we get, living, bringing it back full circle, I love it. But with every single breath we get as a, as a present gift, it's never too late to make a great decision. Right. So just keep looking back, look at the things that have been overcome. If you don't want something, you need something to change, take the breath, change it, and that's a win. Bada bing, bada boom, bro. Man, code. Thank you I so much, bro. Another once upon a time with code. Whoa. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs>